I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Today I've got a really nice geometry problem. So we're going to start with a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, which I've named with vertices A, B, and C. And then inside that triangle, sharing an edge with the hypotenuse, I will inscribe a square. And then in the upper left of the triangle, between the square and the outside edges of the triangle, I'll inscribe a circle. And our final goal is to find the radius of this circle. But our path will be to first find the side length of this square. Okay, so in order to get started here, what I'd like to do is label a bunch of congruent angles inside of this triangle. Because notice, putting the square in here splits the triangle up into pieces. We have the square here, and then we have a triangle down here, a triangle right here, and a triangle up here. So maybe let's start by labeling the vertices of the square. So maybe I'll call this point down here D. Over here, I'll call this point E, this point will be F, and then this point over here will be G. And from there, I'm going to label all of the congruent angles within my picture. So notice, putting the square here, I've split the larger triangle into the square, and then these one, two, three other triangles. And all of those triangles are right angles. So obviously, the large triangle is a right angle by design. This triangle right here, ADE, is also a right triangle because it shares this right angle with our large triangle. And then this angle right here, DGC, is also a right angle because this is a square and we have this side length sharing with the hypotenuse. And then furthermore, over here, this angle EFB or BFE is also a right angle. Okay, great. So I think those are all the right angles that I really need to label just to reinforce that these are all three right triangles. Okay, nice. Now from here, I'll maybe label this angle in orange. So I'm going to label that angle in orange, like I said, and I'll label this angle in green. And because I know the green angle plus the orange angle has to be 90 degrees, because the green angle plus the orange angle plus 90 must be 180, because we know the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180, that tells me that I can maybe angle chase all of the rest of these angles here. So since this one is green, this one is orange, this one is 90 degrees, that means this guy over here also has to be a green angle. So that tells me something like angle AED is congruent to angle GDC. Furthermore, I see that this one also has to be orange for the same sort of reason. Because it's complementary to this green given the fact that this is a right triangle. Now I can play the same game again. So if this is green, this is 90 degrees, so this has to be complementary to green, so this has to be an orange angle. Okay, good. And then furthermore, this one up here, angle ABC, is complementary to orange, so it must be a green angle. Okay, so we have that. But notice by the angle-angle-angle theorem, all of our triangles are similar to each other. That's because they ha all have the same angle measures. They all have a right angle, an orange angle, and a green angle. So that gives us quite a bit of information. Notice we have triangle ABC, so that's the large one, is similar to triangle AED. So let's see which one is AED. That's this small one down here. So that's maybe the one that's most obviously similar because this line right here, which makes the hypotenuse, is parallel to the hypotenuse. And then that's also similar to triangle FBE. So let's see which one that is. That's the one up here in the corner. And finally, we have one more down here, triangle DGC. But now since we have all of these similar triangles, that means we can make arguments about proportions of side lengths. 
But in order to do that, we probably need to start labeling some side lengths. And that's what we'll do right now. So let's say maybe this line segment AD is equal to small a. But if this is small a and then this entire line segment AC is 4, that means this length right here is 4 minus a. Furthermore, we could maybe label this one over here B. So AE has length B. That means this guy right here has length 3 minus B. So BE has length 3 minus B. And then you might say, well, what if we label these? Well, I don't think we really need to label many of these other than the side length of the square. And we'll label the side length of the square X. And I, as I said before, our first goal will be to determine what x is. I'm excited to be working with Squarespace for this video. So personally, I've been using Squarespace for six or seven years for my personal academic website. Squarespace makes good design easy to come by with beautiful templates that allow drag and drop construction. And you can access the back end and coding if you'd like to have even more flexibility. In fact, there's an easy way to integrate LaTeX into Squarespace for Equations. You can check examples of that on my website. I think it does it beautifully. Many academic websites are stuck in the 1990s, especially math websites. And I think it's time for us to step up and have a little bit better design. And that can be easily done with Squarespace. You don't have to be like a design guru to make a beautiful website using this product. Personally, I love to use the analytics to get a feel for where my viewers both come from and what they're interested in. It really makes planning a lot easier. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So what are you waiting for? I think now is a great time to build your own website. And Squarespace is a really great place to do it. And if you do so with my link, you'll be really helping the channel. And now back to maths. Okay, so let's see the first thing that we can see. So first up, we see that a divided by x is the same thing as 4 divided by 5. So why is that? Well, notice that this length down here is also x. And so we're dividing this side of the triangle by the hypotenuse. But that's the same thing as dividing 4 by the hypotenuse of the whole triangle, which is 5. Okay, but that gives us a, an equation relating a and x pretty quickly. It gives us 5a equals 4x, or maybe we could write it as 5a minus 4x is equal to 0. Okay. So let's see if we can get another equation that involves a and x and nothing else. And in fact, we can, and we can get that from this triangle down here, d, g, c. So we can take this x, divide it by 4 minus a. So let's do x divided by 4 minus a. And that proportion should be equal to the resulting proportion of the large triangle. But x is the smallest side of this triangle, and this is the hypotenuse of this triangle, so this should be equal to 3 over 5. Okay, but now we can multiply this out pretty easily. We get 5x equals 12 minus 3a. But now we can move some things around there, and we'll see that 3a plus 5x equals 12. Good. And that gives us a system of two equations and two unknowns to solve for both a and x. Okay, so let's do that. Maybe the first thing that I'd like to do is multiply this first equation by 5. So that's going to give me 25a minus 20x equals 0. And then I'll multiply the second equation by 4. So that gives me 12a plus 20x equals 48. You might say, well, why did I choose 5 and 4? Well, I did that so the coefficients of x would be the same. Okay, now I can add these two equations. And notice if I add these two equations, the x's disappear. And then we'll end up with 25 plus 12, or 
37a equals 48. That's 0 plus 48. That tells us that a is equal to 48 over 37. And we have our value for our first unknown. And then next up, we can maybe plug this guy right here into, let's say, this equation. And we can easily solve for x. So notice we have... 5a, so that's going to be 5 times 48 over 37 equals 4x. Okay, now we can cancel the 4 here and this 12 down to, or this 48 down to a 12, and that leaves us with x equals 5 times 12, which is 60 over 37. Okay, so we've achieved our first goal. So I can erase this real quick and input the side length of this square, which is 60 over 37. But now in order to fill the rest of this in, maybe I'd like to also find what B is. Actually, B is going to be one of the second most important parts because it'll allow us to complete this triangle up here. And completing this triangle up here will be important to find our radius. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Oh, well, I think we can use this triangle down here. So let's notice that B divided by A is going to be the same thing as 3 divided by 4, just by the roles that are being played by those sides on the triangles. So we have this is 3 over 4. So let's see, that tells us that 4A equals 3B. Now we can do a similar calculation to what we did for X, and we'll see that B is equal to 75 over 37. So now we've got our value for, let's see, A, B, and X, and we're ready to use those to figure out the value of our radius. So let's clean this up and then we'll finish it off. So here's where we left ourselves off. We figured out our A and our B terms. On the last board, I had a bit of a typo. I should have had B equal to 36 over 37, but I fixed it now. So I've taken all of that and expanded out the triangle that we're interested in at this point and cleaned it up and completed it. So this number right here, this 75 over 37, that is our 3 minus B. Let's recall that 3 minus B was up here. And then this 60 over 37 is the side of the square. And then we can find out this 45 over 37 by using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now, like I said before, our goal is to finish this off by finding this radius. And we'll do this again with similar triangles. So I'm going to maybe take this and drop a radius down here so it's perpendicular. I'll call this point capital P. I'll drop a radius over here so it's perpendicular. I'll call that point capital R. And then over here so it's perpendicular, I'll call this capital Q. And then furthermore, let's notice that this hypotenuse, segment BE, gets split up naturally into two parts. I'll call this part over here C, and I'll call this part over here D. So next Next up, I'll connect E with the center of this circle. So let's do that. So with a line segment. So there's our center of our circle, which maybe I'll call the center of our circle O. So that's O to E. And then I'll do the same thing up to B. So the center of the circle up to B. But now since this is the center of the N circle, we know that E to O bisects this angle right here, but since it bisects this angle right here, and we share an edge here, an edge here, and enough angles to make congruent triangles, we know that triangle PEO is congruent to triangle QEO. But that means the side lengths are the same, or the corresponding side lengths are the same. So in particular, PE, so length PE, has got to be equal to length QE, which I've called C. So now we just have to figure out what length PE is, but that's pretty easy to calculate because this is a radius transposed down here. This is R. This whole length is 60 over 37. So that tells us that C is equal to 60 over 37 minus R. Now we can play the same game with this triangle out here. So triangle B, 
OR and triangle BOQ are also similar. And so that gives us a similar sort of equation. In this case, it's D equals 45 over 37 minus R. And then finally, we know that D plus C or C plus D is 75 over 37. So let's write that out as well. So also C plus D is 75 over 37. So that means we can add these two up and we'll see that 75 over 37, so that's what we get from C plus D, is gonna be the same thing as 60 plus 45 over 37 minus twice R. So that's by adding these two equations using the fact that C plus D is equal to, like I said, 75 over 37. That gives us a pretty simple equation to solve for R. We'll see that R in this case is 15 over 37. And that was our final goal, was to find the radius of this circle. And that's a good place to stop.